Wow. Next day. This is day three of our trip out to Arizona to look at property. What a blessing to be able to come to this little uh, motel here in Gallup, New Mexico. And um, wasn't, wasn't, uh, wasn't anything fancy, but it was a nice bed to sleep in, which was, a, which was great compared to the, the night in the car uh, the previous night. So uh, a shower and we're, we're ready to go. We're gonna go see some property and you guys are gonna get to come along with us. Uh, we're gonna have a fun day, I hope. Looking forward to it, so come along with us. All right, well we are in Arizona now and on track to be right on time with our real estate agent here in just about an hour. We are driving down Highway 191 from Interstate 40 down to St. John. We are going out to the properties now to take a look at them. This is our realtor, John. John, you want to introduce yourself real quickly? My name is John. And you work for? First United Realty. First United Realty in St. John's, yes. Arizona. Yep. He knows all about these properties. He actually lives on the property off-grid himself. Um, and you were about to tell us a little bit about some history. Well, yes, there's a lot of uh, Old West history that occurred here, which you'll never hear about unless you dig for it. It's, uh, some of it's available on the internet and through books. Uh, one such story is uh, a guy who is believed to either be a saint or a scoundrel <laughs> named uh, Solomon Barth, who um, the story goes, went to Springerville, which is south of here, 25 miles by road, with a pack string to get supplies. And uh, he was halfway back, and uh, this band of Indians caught him, stripped him naked, stole all his stuff, was going to kill him. And this good band of Indians come along, they were friends of his, and they convinced the bad guys to let him go. And, um, wow. So they said, uh, better get out of here before they change their mind. So story goes, he was halfway here. So, uh, by road it's 25 miles. That would be roughly 12 and a half miles, but he would have had to go down into arroyos and around mountains and, you know, around obstacles of who knows what, but he was barefoot and naked. And he had to walk all that way. Wow. That's, uh, I can't imagine walking on this barefoot. Can you? No. I haven't walked on it much at all just yet, but uh, it doesn't look very barefoot friendly to me. Well, this is <laughs> uh, pretty grassy because this is the Little Colorado River Basin. If it wasn't for Lyman Lake uh, damming the Little Colorado River, this would be flooded to some degree or other where these trees are the thickest here is actually the channel where the water would flow the deepest now i noticed when we were out on uh 191 that it said don't don't go in if it's flooded or something does the does 191 flood from time to time yes the carrizo wash will uh flood during the monsoon season uh, there could be up to about a foot of water across the highway right there. So, do you normally cross that in your yeah. Dodge Dually 
What, yeah. do, what do you have on this thing? 35 inch tires or something? I have no idea. They look pretty big, uh, pretty good size. Uh, they look like mud terrains, right? Uh, yeah, um, I'm in all kinds of weather. Uh, snow, ice, mud. Dualies are not good in snow and ice, you probably know that. Sure. Single rear wheel drive is excellent. So why did you go with a dually? Well, I'm a road grading contractor, so I'm hauling backhoes and graders and 40-foot trailers. and So you needed this? Uh, well, duallys are for hauling heavy loads, and this yep. truck will do that. Yep, it will. And this is, what is this? This is uh, 15, 16, 17? This is 2018. 2018? Oh, wow. Okay. got 22,000 miles on it. Very nice, very nice. All right, well, um, this is the road before us. This part's kind of rough. This is actually a detour that's uh, just temporary. The uh, road, the main road, uh, 191. I guess they're doing some work on it out there right now. Yeah. Well, by the way, my wife drives a Cadillac SUV. Okay. So these, this road is not rough. Yeah, right. This is a this, this is a cream this pump is a, road. Yeah, this is a super highway. <laughs> Ranch road. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be getting into some probably some pretty rocky uh, washboard type roads here shortly. But uh, well, the roads in the ranches generally get graded once a year, and that's not really enough uh, for you know city slickers who want smooth roads all the time. Right. But for a you know, one-time annual fee of 200 to $250, depending on the ranch, uh -huh. equates to $16.67 a month. Right. So yeah. um, most people don't want to pay even that, but it is right. required. Right. I think it's money well spent, especially when you figure or factor in that uh, you also provide a community well for everyone. Uh, the community well is termed properly a convenience well. It's for convenience sake. It's not for. It's not to uh, uh, provide an unlimited source of water to every property owner. Right. Uh, Woodland Valley Ranch has a 500 gallon per week maximum draw rate. Uh, Sierra Mountain and Sierra Highlands have a 500 gallon per month maximum draw rate. Mm. So if you're coming up to your property and uh, you need some water, you can get it there, but it's really not intended to supply an unlimited supply of water. Okay. Well, that's some uh, good information to know. I did not, I had been told that. That being said, uh, I, my wife and I use about 500 gallons a month. Okay. And that provides all our needs. Wow. Bathing, okay. washing clothes, washing dishes. We have a dishwasher. We don't like to wash dishes, so that's one luxury we're willing to use a little bit more water on. And you have a garden. Well, I haul water from town. I don't even use the community well because it's 16 miles one way to that well, and that's all I can get there is free water. Right. So I've got to go to town anyway. So now we're detour here so now we're back out on 191 all right well we'll pick this up once we actually get out onto some properties or the road into the properties anyway well I think we're getting close we're in Sierra Highlands right now this property out in here has already been sold for the most part right uh, we have two parcels here on Deer Trail which are available they're 22,500 each. And they're all just flat, just like this, no yes. trees. Yeah. And this section over here will be open soon. It's pretty flat here too. Yeah. So does this whole, would this whole area ever flood? Uh, it has sheet flow, which is from rain, and then it runs off. Okay, so. There'll be, there'll be two inches of water standing on that just from rainfall only. Okay. And an hour later, it'll be gone. Okay. So that'd be about it then. Yeah. Is any of that rocky stuff up there? Be yeah, we'll we'll be available here soon. This over here? Uh huh.
Yeah, I like that. I like this over here too, but none of those properties are available. Those are all sold. Yeah. I'll tell you something. Um, people love those rocks, but good luck putting a uh, septic in there without blasting. So if you want to have a compost toilet or something like that, which I'm not a big fan of them. Some people like them. I personally don't care for them. I would never have one. Uh, a lot of people are under the impression that they've got to make use of every tiny little drop of water and a compost toilet would be a good way to do that, and that's true. But, you know, time is money, and uh, maybe you've got more time than you've got money. But uh, I'm, a, I'm the kind of person that likes to be productive, busy, you know, working, producing, and if you want to sit around uh, more often than you do produce, then probably a septic or a uh, compost toilet would be the way to go. I just think they're more work than they're worth. I'm sure you're picking up in the video that this is a lot of washboarding here, but it's not terrible. I've been on worse, but... Um, this road was graded about two and a half months ago. Okay, well that's that's not bad, really. And for one thing, uh, because I own property here, I'm grading some of these roads for free for my own use. Nice. Uh, everyone that uses the road gets the benefit of that free work. Mm -hmm. If you see look at this rock in. right over. Initials says PD. Uh huh. And then if you look right next to it, you'll see some ancient artifact or um, not artifacts, but uh, petroglyphs. Yeah, petroglyphs. I showed that to my manager. We were out touring property, and he said that's like defacing the Mona Lisa. But it's his property. You can do with it what he wants. You can see there's a little stick figure there to the mm -hmm. left of mm -hmm. PD. And down below that, there's a little snake symbol and some other. Those are 800 to 1,200 years old. And Very then good. these two big boulders right here that are up off the road here mm -hmm. uh, has a split between the two. Look mm -hmm. at the one on the right. Oh, yeah. The flat face there. Yeah. Kind of a lizard figure and a turtle figure down below that. And a little vortex. Yeah. And they're all over. That uh, young guy I was telling you about that wanted the really rocky parcel. Mm -hmm. We found some petroglyphs there that nobody else knew. There's a guy from Florida that spends a lot of time here, right up on the top up there. I see the people that have these properties here once on a blue moon. I think they're retirees. So really living out here, it's almost as if you have the place just about to yourself. Yes. You might want to get out and film that one. Yeah, let's do right that. Right down low there. Uh, they have a cultural event called a Barefoot Walk. And that property back there with all the petroglyphs on it, that's part of the Zuni? Yes, this whole section of land here okay. belongs to the Zuni. It's not reservation land, but it is their private land. Uh -huh. uh, there's a, a cave out here somewhere where they walk from Zuni, which is about 25 miles east of the New Mexico border. Um, you can Google it. I'd like to get the book because uh, there's somebody who's written a book about it. I mm -hmm. don't know a whole lot about it, but I know that uh, some kind of a cultural event maybe has a religious significance. I don't know. 
and they carry these little effigies uh, and then put them in this cave out here somewhere. Hmm. Interesting, you said they walk barefoot. Yes. 20, you said 25 miles? Well, that's just to the New Mexico border. Oh, wow. Uh, from the town of Zuni, and then from here, it's probably probably another 15 or 20 miles. Wow. If you uh, look right over the top of your mirror, move your head over this way, and look right over the top of the mirror there, uh -huh. you can see an old stone building sticking up there. Oh, yeah, 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 I see it, yeah. Uh, that was an old trading post, I'm told, by a guy in town who says that his family has been here for seven generations. Hmm. And there's a spring that seeps out of the rocks over there. Um, this uh, building inspector inspected a septic that I installed here recently. We were talking about uh, the area here. Mm -hmm. he, he's the one. He said, family been here for seven generations. And they were out here once when he was a baby. Hmm. And they put him down, he was playing in the dirt, and he found some buttons um, from a soldier's jacket. Hmm. They identified them as being from a soldier's uniform. Wow. And I had no idea all these years I've been coming out here that that was an old trading post. Huh. Well, I tell you, John, this is somewhat surreal for us. We've been looking at this property for, like I said, almost three years or somewhere around three years. And uh, to finally be able to actually come out here and see it in person. That's awesome. Well, I love it here. So did my wife. Man, that is beautiful. So if you look to... Yeah. This, this, there's a pinion pine right here in front of you. Uh huh. Just to the oh, left yeah, yeah, of it yeah, down yeah, there at the yeah, bottom. Yeah. Let me, let me see if I can get a zoom on that. Get my eyeballs on And those sticks that are sticking up behind it is a sheepfold. Uh, there's a rancher that uh, I know out here, and uh, he's Mormon. I'm not Mormon, but there's a big Mormon area here. Yes. And um, I asked him if these old stone buildings were from Mormon pioneers that settled the area back in the 1800s. And he says, no, they're much older than that. If you remember your American history, all of the Southwest belonged to Spain. Mm -hmm. And the king of Spain gave his rich friends the Dons, you know, Don Juan, Don Quixote, mm -hmm. these massive land grants. So the Dons would uh, share crop with the local indigenous people, mostly Mexicans, probably not any Indians, but uh, to run uh, sheep out here uh -huh. for the land baron. So the, those Mexicans built those homes out of the rock that's just laying around here. Wow. That's the right way to do it. Well, using the materials at hand is... Yeah cheaper than having to haul it in on a wagon, you know, by horses. Absolutely. <laughs> How fast do these junipers grow? And do they, they grow typically? very slowly. These uh, trees I are probably so. 50, 60 years old. Wow. So if you go cutting them down, then they're not going to be back anytime soon. Well, they're, they've evolved to be a drought resistant tree. They don't take a lot of water to grow. They grow uh -huh. very, very slowly. Just like a cactus, yeah. Um, but give a cactus water, and it'll grow like crazy. Give hmm. these trees water, and they'll grow like crazy. Uh, okay. So if you water them, then then they'll go fast. And you can um, run your gray water out onto the trees to water them. It's legal to do that, provided that if it backs up, it'll go into your septic simple engineering trick that you can do with your plumbing. So are, are we at some lots here? That, uh, yeah, some parcels awesome. here together are available. Yeah. OK, 
Okay, we're here on one of the available properties, and look at that view. Isn't that beautiful? You know anything about gemstones? Not a lot, really. I just like rocks. <laughs> this is an agate. Hold it up to the light, and you can see through it. They're all over the place. Yeah. There's a little, little one right there. That's a big piece of quartz. Mm hmm. Hmm. Wow. You can find arrowheads and spear points and pottery. And That's just really, really awesome. <laughs> this is a piece of pottery, right? No, it isn't. That's just a rock. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell by the, it, it'll be grainy. Yeah, it, yeah I can see why you would confuse that. It almost yeah. looks like it is a piece of pottery. There's, these are agates right here. These uh, polish up nice. Huh. You can see through them. Can I take a few rocks? Oh, sure. Nobody <laughs> will miss them. <laughs> I, think, I think my wife uh, would be content to stay here and just pull up rocks. <laughs> Sells a little rock crumbler for 40 bucks, which yeah, I used to have one when we were kids. These will these will polish up real nice. That is very neat. And some of them already feel polished. This this is jasper right here. Now you might think this is weird, but this is what rock hounds do. Oh, that's jasper. See how that will uh -huh. polish up. Uh -huh. Two things that tells you what. When you lick it like that, uh, if your tongue sticks to it, it's too soft to grind. Hmm. Because the pores in the rock will create a suction. And so if it's not porous, then your tongue doesn't stick to it. So hmm. Interesting. This is jasper here. A little different. Now is this jasper? Or yes, it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, okay. Some people don't like to lick them because they don't know where the cows have been peeing. But... <laughs> it's just a few extra minerals, right? Yeah. <laughs> Salt in your diet's good. Yeah. It's so quiet. Oh, I know. That's, I love that's what I get also. Oh, wow. That's a big one. You have a diamond saw cut into that, and who knows what you'll find in there. Hmm. Really? Neat. This is round. a pinion pine right here. Oh, no, it's... That's a pinion pine? That's a pinion pine. I saw another pine. You'll get pine nuts off of these. Oh, really? Oh, really? Oh, that's awesome. Um, see the pine cones down there? Everybody I know has got a little pile of rocks by their front door. Yeah. <laughs> they go out and collect them. I mean, they're just like... I mean, I could just pick these things up forever. So and there is petrified wood here too. Right. Yeah, We're near petrified forest, so stands to reason, right? Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. Look at this, folks, That's man. This is this is uh this is what we're talking about. And listen. Yeah. Peace and quiet. That's deer dung right yeah, there. Yeah, I saw I've been seeing a lot of that. There's elk dung all over the place. There's in fact, at the lower end of this property, there's an area where there's deer dung and piles just all over the place. So <laughs> it's probably an area that they frequent going to and from wherever they're going. It's a nice pinion pine now. This is just amazing. I'll just lay it. Corner <laughs> of the Love property it. is way over that way. So once we get some water to the soil, most anything will grow. Yeah, the Anasazi Indians lived here 800 to 1,200 years ago, and they didn't have chemical fertilizers. They did use that mulch that's under the trees to amend the soil. It helps to hold the moisture. There's an Indian ruin right next to my property in Woodland Valley, which I'm told is, according to one of the salesmen, have been here a lot longer than I have. It's one of the most significant ruins in the whole area. Wow. You can't put your foot down without touching at least two pieces of pottery. Wow. On Google Earth, you can see a, a round depression, which you can't, if you didn't know that was a kiva, you'd just, you know, 
pass on by, but that's what it was. What is that? Ceremonial room that was dug underground, had a roof over the top of it and ladders that went down inside. Hmm. Wow. Um, but that one ruin is estimated to have some six to 800 people living in it. Wow. Hmm. So what did they eat? They farmed, and they farmed right in their soil. So this is state land? On your right. Yeah. To my right is all state land that way. All right. So this is, this is kind of like having a whole lot of additional land at your recreational disposal. And you can go on there and stuff. You have to have a permit. Oh, you do. Okay. To uh, set foot on. It's not like BLM, it's oh. state land. How difficult is it to get a permit? Very easy. <clears throat> 20 bucks a year. Oh, okay. You and your immediate family. Cool. Okay, we are back from our venture here looking at the different properties. This is the sign for the company. Um, first, United Realty. This is their little office here. We have uh, looked at what? About six properties, kind of just driving by but then three properties pretty in depth. One property we completely walked. And we're still going tomorrow to look at a couple other uh, properties out west. But uh, John here, he's been a, a great guy to work with. If you have an opportunity and you want to uh, check out this, this possibility of living off grid here in Arizona, uh, I highly met, recommend John here. Thank you. He, he did an excellent, excellent job taking us around and showing us everything we wanted to see. Thank you so much, my friend. You're welcome. Thank yes. You. And uh, we, we will be in touch. This is going to be the end. Okay. It, you know, we, if the deal completely goes through, mm -hmm. like we talked about, we're going to be neighbors. Yeah. So that's awesome. I have a Facebook page, too. So oh, you do? Check yeah. it out. Okay. And it, it is just your name or what is it? John Helsel hyphen real estate agent. Okay. All right, hope you got that, and uh, we'll, we'll put a link to it in the comments below or description below. All right, thanks again, All right. my friend. Okay. Have a blessed day. Thank you. Well, we've left St. John's, and we have come up through Holbrook, or Holbrook. Now we are on Interstate 40 going west again. We are going to Flagstaff, and we will be staying the night there in Flagstaff. And then tomorrow morning, we will go on to um, Ash Fork, where we will be viewing some other properties there. So, um, what, a, what a day. What a great day. Wonderful day we had with our real estate agent there, John. Just super nice guy. So, um, anyway, we're on our way now to Flagstaff, Arizona. We'll show you some more sites when we get there. This is our tomato. Looking delicious.